So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Meet the Oppo series, the show where I bring the lowdown of town's next opponent, which of course is against Pompey, the last game of 2022, a trip to Fratton Park. I'm joined by Andrew Moon, the man who commentates on all Pompey games. Um, Andrew, thanks for joining me, first of all. How is things? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Uh, nice Christmas. Uh yeah, things good in that regard, but things certainly less good in terms of on the pitch for Portsmouth. It's been a tough couple of months, it must be said, and welcoming the one of the best teams in the division to, to Fratton Park tonight, in some ways, not, not the ideal fixture in the current circumstances. Yeah, 11th in League One, form is not good, can't score goals. Um, let's get the low down on that then. Uh, yeah. Since we last played, of course, that was a fantastic game at Portman Road. Of course, we played since then as well. We played in the Pizza Cup, but whatever. You're in it still. Yeah. We're out of it. Whatever. I don't care. I don't care, Andrew. Um, but the form for Pompey in the league has not been great. Um, yeah, let, give us a lowdown. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that game. I think Ipswich probably deserved to win that game that was 3-2, but it was pretty close. I thought Pompey could easily have nicked, nicked a point. It was a pretty entertaining game between what like looked like two fairly decent, decent sides. And since then, yeah, Portsmouth's form... It's just absolutely fallen off a cliff. One win, which was a narrow one at Forest Green since then, developed a really nasty habit of conceding from virtually the first attack opponents have. You don't think that's going to keep going, but you mentioned the goals and that that is the problem. Pompey were averaging two and a half goals a game their first eight, nine games of the season. I think they've scored four in the past nine. I'd have to double check that. It's something like that. The, the goals have completely dried up and that's a big problem. Injuries have hit in in key positions and what started off looking like a really promising season has hit a really really concerning slide that that needs to be turned around pretty soon because i think while danny cowley still definitely has the the backing of of the board and the chairman the aim this season is to be in the top six and at the minute that pompey are sliding further and further away from that playoff zone yes they've still got games in hand but that they just need to find a way to get a couple of wins and get some confidence back. And it's interesting you mentioned the, the, the pizza trophy. Yeah, it, th those games are not that important. But actually, Pompey played OK in that game. They've had a few fairly decent FA Cup wins as well. It's this weird period where Pompey can win games in the Cup, but they can't win games in the league. And you'd probably swap a couple of those EFL trophy wins for three points in the league. Yeah, definitely. And of course, yeah, nice little trip to Spurs um, for you next year. So I'm sure Portman fans are looking forward to that. I'm sure you're looking forward to going to the, the lovely Port um, Spurs Stadium, which is very nice. Um, let's talk about the current mood. You mentioned Danny Cowley. He's got the backing of the, the owners, but I'm sure fans are getting frustrated. You know, 11th in League One, not really where they want to be. Um, so what is the current mood with fans and what's Cowley, Sam? Yeah, Cowley, when we spoke to him, has still been, been fairly chipper. He really believes that he'll turn it round and be successful at, at this club. The mood amongst the fans, the last game, the loss to MK Dons, Pompey went 2-0 down about an hour in. They weren't terrible, but they conceded two sloppy goals and didn't offer that much threat going forward. Now, they got didn't get the rub of the green of the refereeing calls. They had a goal disallowed for offside that was probably incorrect. But half an hour left with 2-0 the score it, it turned pretty ugly at Fram Park. There was a lot of anger coming from the from the terraces, and the Portsmouth fans are, are, are passionate. They care. This is ten years outside the top two tiers that there's frustration. And I think when you go to today tonight's match, if the fans will, will get behind Portsmouth to start with, you can guarantee that. But if Ipswich were to take a two 0 lead, things could get ugly. And I think you might see that frustration could come out again perhaps even potentially in a, in a more more serious manner so that is is a concern I'm sure that's not going to be something that the, the players are thinking about they're going to be trying to win the game but I'm certainly thinking about how's it going to go tonight because if it goes in Ipswich's favour things things might get a bit a bit ugly yeah of course last time we were there of course Paul Cook was in charge and town won 4-0 so if it's the same sort of scoreline yeah, best of luck, Danny Cowley, with the Pompey faithful, I'm sure, because it's going to be a great atmosphere, I can imagine. Um, of course, at the moment, uh, both camps have got a lot of illnesses, but some people think, could that be mind games from both camps? But we shall see. Um, well, let's take a Yeah. I would say, I, I, I don't know if it's mind games, but we saw on Boxing Day, for example, Connor Ogilvy was in the squad, but he, he kind of didn't even come out to warm up. 
and we've basically sat in the dressing room ill in the case of come as an emergency. The only thing I'd say with these kind of viruses that players have been struck down, it, it seems like there's, it's not all everyone at Pompey's got the same. It seems like there's two or three different ones going around. You know how these viruses work. Sometimes you take two or three days to recover. Other days, you have a virus that knocks you out for two days and suddenly on day three, you wake up and you feel fine. Yeah. So who knows who isn't, isn't going to be able to play. And you think some players are probably better at playing through than others, but it does add a, a randomness into who's going to be available and you've also got to realize it's not just who plays it affects obviously Pompey played Boxing Day they would have liked to have a couple of days on the training pitch but that is going to have been more limited because of who's available so it, it does have an effect yeah it does you're, you're good though Andrew you're, you're already fighting ready to go for tonight I, I, don't want to, I, I don't want to curse it but I, yeah. I haven't picked up any of these illnesses over Christmas so touch wood that continues but I've, I've been I seem like the only person who's been fighting fit. So fingers crossed that continues. Definitely, mate. Definitely. Um, well, that's the um, last 11 against Exeter. Of course, the, the goal is draw. Um, for it at the back now, uh, Joe Pig, of course, won't be playing because he's, of course, a lone player. Um, quickly on him, how's he been? He's been in and out. I know Cowley's come out recently to talk about his, you know, his frustration of, you know, Piggott, you know, not playing the minutes he probably wanted. But yeah, what's he been like? Yeah, he's done he's done okay in periods. He scored a couple of goals, got a brilliant free kick in the EFL trophy. But he has the problem for him is he's very much been second fiddle to Colby Bishop. And so and there is a bit of a view that maybe the two of them can't play together. So he has been in and out of the team. You know what you get with him? He's an intelligent player, he's a he's a good finisher. He's often been used to the likes of Wimbledon, a bit of a team with the attack built around him. <laughs> I think as much as the, if you look at Pompey, you've got Bishop and Piggott. Bishop is their player they spent a chunk of money on in the summer and have got a lot invested in, whereas Piggott is the lone player. So if there's a coin flip between the two, you, you, you're going to go for Bishop. Bishop has scored 13 goals. It's a good return in the first half of the season, but he struggled a bit in December. So it, Piggott may well have started tonight if that had been an option. Of course, unfortunately for him, it isn't. So we, we won't be seeing him this evening. Now, obviously, his loan deal is one where there isn't an automatic recall in January, which is fairly rare. Whether he'll still be at Portsmouth beyond January, I think there are still some question marks, but there are only question marks at the moment. We don't really know how that's going to go. And I think there's been a lot of clamour from some supporters to see a little bit more of him than we have seen. Yeah, because he's a proven goal scorer at this level, but just hasn't worked out of town, hasn't worked out just yet at Pompey, but we shall see. Um, any other players who could make a statement tonight who want to maybe step up? You know, Bishop is a man who scored against town before, and I'm sure he has been leading the line. Any other players? Of course, Ryan Tunnicliffe, a former loan player at town as well. Um, but yeah, any other players there? And would there be any surprise? Like Dane Scarlett, of course, I think he was one of them who was out ill, but he's a player that played pretty well against us in those two games we played against Pompey. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Scarlett plays some part tonight. I've got the feeling he might be getting a bit better, but I, I, is he going to be well enough to start? We'll have to see. So the intrigue with the formation is one of the reasons they've gone through at the back is they basically haven't had a fit and available right back. Joe Rafferty, who started the season well there, is out probably for another month or so. There is Zach Swanson, who's come in and done fairly well, has been injured. He might be OK to play tonight. We'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. So you've ended up with this slightly problematic right side of the fence where you've got Michael Morrison, who's a good centre-half, but probably not a natural right of the three, probably a bit more comfortable in a, in a two. And Owen Dale is a right wing-back who, he's an attacking winger and he's playing there out of necessity because there's no one else, but really you want him further up the pitch. Now, given how Leif Davis played against Portsmouth at Portman Road, you, I, I would be surprised if... Morrison and Dale will continue to be the right side defence because Davis was gave one of the best performances we've seen against Portsmouth all season. I know Burns has been ill and he's touch and go, but if Davis plays, you look at that and think that that is potentially problematic. Um, Pack has not quite got back to the early season form after injury, but he is still someone to to watch out for. Um, Raggett and Robertson are, are, are very solid centre halves and Josh Griffiths in goal has been has been doing really well recently. I would think there'd probably be three, maybe four changes to that team that 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 we you've got listed up there. Hard to pick out exactly who because I don't know who's who's well and who's ill, but I don't think it'll be exactly exactly the same as that. Okay, then we shall wait and see. Um, 
Well, Andrew, this is going to be a big game um, for probably ports of season, for town season to end 2022 on a high. Um, how, how do you think it's going to go? Um, how, how are you feeling ahead of the game? I, if I'm honest, you're li a little bit fearful because I think Danny Cowley said it yesterday. I agree. Ipswich are probably the best team in the division. I know Plymouth are top. Uh, it's not fluke that Plymouth are top, but you look at some of their statistics and you think that they're probably outperforming some of those statistics at the moment. I would imagine, I, I still think Ipswich will win this division. I think they'll win the league. I think they're the best squad. And if Ipswich, even if Pompey are in good form, if Ipswich turn up and play really well, it's going to be really difficult. Pompey not in great form. If Ipswich turn up and play well, it has the potential, potential to get ugly. But Portsmouth have a habit of putting in performances when you don't necessarily expect them to. So I would not be surprised if Portsmouth are able to get themselves a draw this evening. But I think it would need to be a, a backs to the wall, real dig in performance. And if if you see that from Portsmouth, like last back in January, Pompey went to Oxford and they were in a bit of a mess. The form wasn't good. And in the end, they lost 3-2, but it was two very late goals. And it was one of those where actually the fans stuck with them the whole way because they saw a really committed, passionate performance that probably deserved more than they got. And if Pompey can provide that, then the fans will, will back them. And I think Pompey can get something out of the game. The worry is Pompey have got to navigate that first 20, 25 minutes without conceding because confidence is not that high at the minute. Concede, the fans could turn, it could, it could go ugly. But if you get through that first quarter, OK, no reason why Portsmouth couldn't get something from the game. OK, then we shall wait and see. Uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be a rainy entertaining game. Definitely one, two big sides taking on each other. Uh, Andrew, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining me. Any other business? Um, your quick sort of recap on 2022 as a whole for Pompey. You know, it's been an up and down sort of year for them. But, you know, hopefully a better 2023. Yeah, actually, the second half of last season, not bad in terms of results. Points-wise, fairly good. But where they started the year playoffs was always going to be very optimistic so no shock they didn't quite make it and then this season started well and then has, has tailed off so yeah I guess we'll hope for more consistency in, in, in 2023 and a, a push back towards that top six. We shall see of course and um, this is now becoming a bit of a, a rivalry it's another chapter in this rivalry Danny Cowley versus Kieran McKenna we shall see if you go into the game enjoy if you're not make sure to follow the game with us and uh, yeah bring it on bye-bye for now.